How the Studio Bones managed to achieve such high quality week after week. I could have swore I had this exact same conversation last week, and even on episode 5. This series, Mob Psycho 100, is definitely going to be a classic. I think after years pass, people are going to look back at this series and be like, you need to watch Mob Psycho. It is an iconic series that needs to be watched. Because this episode, the development on Mob, all of the other characters from Scar, Regan, what he did, just, there's so many scenes throughout this episode that's just absolutely mind-blowing. And it's not just Studio Bones. It's also one as a writer. The one that even created this world in the first place. There's just, there's so much things working here to make this series amazing that it's incredible. And I think many can agree with me, in terms of stuff from this anime season, like this anime season, this is probably one of the best shows. I'm not talking about continuations like JoJo or, you know, Slime. I'm just talking about stuff that came out from this anime season. This is clearly one of the best. And probably the best. And because the art animation alone just speaks so much. It's because the amount of time put into these individual scenes, like the whole fight scene with the guy that you know is able to teleport, that entire fight scene, if you did not notice, there was so much effort and passion put into every single frame. Like, seeing the POV shots to where the dude was just trying to watch in the out like outline and just see how he can initiate and attack the dude, to how you have these up-close and personal shots where you're seeing how the teleporter is actually teleporting the scene from his perspective, or the whole perspective of where, you know, Taro gets grabbed and shoved into the building. There's just so many POV shots with the camera angles that blows my mind. I haven't seen an anime use this many camera angles in such a way, this perfectly, in a long time because most of the time when you see camera angles constantly shifting back and forth different perspectives of characters it can be a little bit confusing it, it happens and let's just be real with each other even if it has amazing animation and it's high quality often you will have it to where because of how high quality it is and just so much going on at once that your mind your eyes cannot keep track of every single little detail going on because you just lose focus because there's just so much going on at once and while watching this the flow from each scene to each scene was perfect it was like just flowing water it was there was nothing like you know pressing up against each other it was just completely perfect flow of water when it came to each scene with changing the pov shots from character to character while they're trying to take this dude down that's able to teleport and predict their movements, their, you know, motives on when they wanted to attack him. It's just, it's a really good, good show of Studio Bones' skill, the people working on this episode's skill, just Mob Psycho in general as a hallmarker for a series for Studio Bones' entire track record. It's just, oh my god, I, I, I cannot get enough of this series. And this is probably, I, I know I've said it so much, but this is the best episode yet now. This is legitimately the best episode of Mob Psycho 100 to date. Now this most likely can be surpassed in the next episode because we're going to be finally having the match between Mob versus the boss. So I am looking forward to that and seeing how that's going to go down. Because there is a lot of hints that the boss is going to be one of the biggest challenges Mob is ever going to have to face. Because the dude has been charging his power for 20 plus years. That's ridiculous. So, he's probably going to put up quite a bit of a fight. But, before I get more into that though, I want to talk about Mogami. Mogami appeared once again. I think that's his name. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Mogami popped up in this episode, and you can see how he slightly made a little bit of a shift of personality. Like, he's still savage and brutal like he always was, but you can see that Mob has slightly changed him. And just how, how Mogami has changed Mob, Mob has changed Mogami, they both act a little bit differently. Even though Mogami has this savage nature to him, he showed a side to him that's a little bit more kind compared to how he was episodes ago. He actually let the individual go from the Ultimate Five, and it's like, okay, you know, you're too kind, Mob, and all that, and he, like, disappears. Mogami could have easily have killed that man instantly, but he didn't because of Mob's words and how much he respected Mob, and now he kind of wants to see what Mob's decision 
leads to. And he does point out that Mob isn't hard enough on people, and Mob gets that. He figures it out how he needs to be a little bit more harsh, harder on people, to be able to get things done what needs to be done. And that's a fundamental thing that he learns, and it fits so well with his character, because it is something that Mob isn't really good with. He's very kind. He's a very kind lovable boy. Even though he lacks in a lot of areas in terms of social skills or being able to actually physically do work like activities and stuff, he still is a very kind individual. He's very humble, modest, and when you see how in this episode towards the end where he's like, everybody, I want you to stay back. I want you to stay behind. It showed how he is trying to be a little bit more harsh. And not a, in a bad way. He was doing that because, look, guys, you're injured. I don't want you guys to die. I don't want you guys to get hurt even more than you already are. I'm the only one that isn't hurt right now. And so Mob's kindness stepped in, but he did add a little bit of a layer of harshness to just say it like it is. So he is becoming a little bit better at socializing with his peers, people that are a part of his group and I just love how Mogami has slowly changed Mob so much and it's not just Regan or anyone it's just everyone that's around Mob has changed him considerably and like I said Mogami has changed too thanks to Mob's influence and I do wonder if Mogami is ever going to pop back up again because it is clarified that he just disappears so that does mean that he could still just be wandering around as a spirit and not necessarily passed on to the afterlife permanently gone which by the way can we talk about how it's clear as day now that Mogami was probably one of the hardest fights that Mob has probably ever had. Like, I, I really did not realize how crazy that fight was until after thinking about the Ultimate Five in this episode. Mogami was an, a ridiculous opponent. I mean, he was around for a long time. He was basically a character that was Mob if Mob went down the wrong path. But he, even though his potential isn't as high as Mob's, like, Mob is obviously a lot stronger, Mogami is definitely not weak by any means. And he was a gifted psychic. And seeing how his fight was with Mob and how Mob was pushed like he was in 100% and then eventually he had to go into mystery mystery percent just to be able to face the spirits that leaked out of Mogami, it just makes you wonder like... Is there ever going to be a fight that actually could top that? Because Mogami is ridiculous. And I mean, the form we saw in this episode was not 100% full strength Mogami. He, he, that was a weakened version. He's weakened. He was nowhere near his level of strength that he was. And he was able to easily demolish the Ultimate Five like it was nothing. So it puts in perspective just how OP Mob is when he gets really freaking strong. But okay, anyways, let's, um, let's talk about the, uh the scene, or the fight scene in general, like, when it came to Teru fighting, uh, I think, uh, Shimazaki, I, I think that's his name, if I'm saying his name wrong, you know, correct me in the comments below, but that entire scene with Teru, when he's grabbed by the face and just slammed into the building, I honestly had some anxiety, like, my heart was pumping, because, you know, this series has been kind of playing with darkish themes for a while now, and I do feel like, since the actual series, the uh, the original source is concluded at this time, I wonder if there will be a permanent character death. That is a possibility. I know one is a pretty freaking good writer. He definitely proves it through Mob Psycho 100 and One Punch Man, but I do wonder if he has the will or, I guess, the balls to be able to actually kill off important characters. And I'm constantly worried about that because... You see to where he's been playing with those themes a little bit recently. And I do wonder if he will tackle that in some point in the future to really see what Mob would actually do if he lost someone truly important to him. And I feel like one of the characters that would probably hit him one of the most would definitely be Dimple or Regan. And Dimple would be a good character to kind of disappear since he's technically a spirit. It'd be interesting if he finally passed on to the afterlife that unwillingly and Mob lost him. I wonder how that would make him feel. That is something I kind of am interested about if Mob would react in a, a, you know, a dark way if he was to lose him. I mean, we got a glimpse of that would have happened with his parents, but I'm kind of curious about that. But okay, um, yeah, Teru, though, I was a little bit scared, though, for him. I, I thought he might die or something or get permanently injured because the way he was getting slammed through the buildings and just getting hit back and forth, I'm like, oh my god, it's, it's pretty savage. Like, that's a way to use teleporting powers, by the way. Like, you know, a lot of shows and literature don't really demonstrate how OP teleporters are. And I, I feel like this was a perfect way to represent teleporters and how scary they really can be in the right hands. Because most of the time, 
teleporters in shows, media, or whatever, they typically just teleport maybe a couple feet away, or they're able to just escape things, or they're just, uh, they're thieves. They go in, and they steal things and get out, or whatever. They're mainly used to support characters. They're never really used to actually get on the front lines and fight. And seeing Shimazaki fight like he did, and how he was constantly just teleporting around, instantly punching them and teleporting, and then grabbing them, right, like, taking them up above the buildings, dropping them and teleporting back down below, and then slamming him after the momentum built up and slammed him into the building. I just love the way the teleporting was used. It's stuff like that you just do not see often with these type of abilities, and I appreciate how one actually uses that. You can see he really loves, like, power system, or powers like this. Like, he must love comics and stuff, and heroes, because of how One Punch Man is, but also how Mob Psycho is. He definitely knows his stuff and how to use these abilities and make them very unique and just fascinating. But I think I'm going to end it there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to, you know, get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below because for some reason even if you click the subscribe button you don't always get notified so if you want to get notified for whenever i do upload hit that bell icon down below and with that chibi out